Hello there. This is a Nanawa Chosera 400 grit stone. I received this a 4K Hayabusa, Hayabusa and a 1K Chosera as Christmas gifts. Uh, and I want to kind of talk about these stones. Hone home one of them. Uh, basically just uh, an excuse to, to hone with these stones. But also just to talk about them a bit. And they come, both of them come with a little rubber. A little rubbing stone to clean the stone with. I have the one for the 1K right here. I'm going to soak here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to do some honing on the 1K. But you have the 400 and then the 1K. Now the 400, both of these stones are fantastic stones, by the way. The 400 is wonderful for... Uh, I use it for like gold dollars or heavily ground razors or uh, any razor that has warps, wobbles, uh, that needs a bevel cut into it, whatever. If I need to do any heavy lifting, uh, I even shape with this. Uh, if I have a razor and, and, and I seldom shape the spine on a razor. In other words, uh, I sell them correct geometry issues. I prefer to, I, there are ways to hone razors that have geometry issues where you can pretty much take the geometry issues out of consideration a lot of times uh, and not put a lot of wear on the spine of a razor, that kind of deal. Now if it's a gold dollar, I don't have a problem with spine wear because they're thick and bulky anyway. Uh, but on a vintage razor, I prefer not to put any more spine wear on that razor than I have to. And so I will use other means, if possible, to reach a, a uh, shaving edge unless I have to. But any kind of work like that, this is good for. Uh, if you have chips in a blade... Uh, this is good for that. Uh, this combined with a good, uh, fairly coarse diamond stone uh, will do wonders for corrective surgery on any kind of razor. As a matter of fact, I use this. I don't have anything under 400 anyway in a diamond stone. So most of the time I use this to do all of my shaping, you know, so far. I've used these stones, tested them, uh, and found them to be absolutely fantastic stones. We're gonna, I'm gonna move to the 1K right now. I have a a razor that I want to uh, basically kill the edge on. I'm gonna do that on a piece of glass. Went good and dead. Alright. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hold on a minute. But I'm going to take this 1K now and reset this bevel. Uh, the main reason I'm doing this is that uh, I have some razors that shave really well, but I'm uh, they don't, I don't reach for them as much as I do other razors in my possession, collection, how good as you want to call that. Uh, because uh, I just don't. And uh, I want to take this razor, I want to take this stone. And I want to go all the way back to bevel set and come up through 
the, the grit. Chosera 1K. Hayabusa 4K. 8K and then some type of finisher. Uh, just because uh, I think they'll benefit more with the way for the way that the finish that these uh, blades these homes leave on a razor. Now I, I home for years on soaker stones, and I, the stones that I used are good quality stones. They were they were a gift. Most of them from other honers. And so understand I'm not doing this because the edge that I got off of those stones is in any way inferior. But uh, these stones, they're not uh, that's already almost completely set. They cut the same as these stones do as they're soaking as the counterparts, the soakers, the king, superhero, that kind of thing that I have used for years. But, in my opinion, they leave a much finer scratch pattern on the edge. If you can look, that's undercutting very well now. Did not take hardly any time at all. But they cut, and in my opinion, leave a finer scratch pattern. They feel better. They don't load as much as the others do. But I'm just trying to, you know, show the difference between the stones. Uh, if I was using, say, let's, uh, if I was using, say, this Suhiro 1K, 3K. This is a fantastic stone. Uh, if you don't have a whole lot of money, that stone right there is just absolutely awesome it's a soaker but this is a fantastic stone the thing of it is is within about 10 passes I'll have black swarf embedded in this so deep that I'll have to lap it or use some kind of cleaning stone to clean the surface off so that I can continue to get the cut that I'm looking for nothing wrong with that you deal with uh, the different characteristics of the stones that you have and move forward honing. That's the way that works. Uh, this stone, you can see it's, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's building up swarf, but the swarf is not embedding into this. And I'm using a lot less water on this stone than I would one of those soakers too, by the way. But... It's not embedding in the stone. The stone's not loading up like it does, like one of those soakers does. And uh, that's something that I really love about these stones. They're just, the feel of them is different. They're, I'm not saying any one of them is superior because of the way that they feel. It's just, they're just different. This is a lovely stone. Feels like there's some kind of grit. 
something up under there. It felt like there was a bit of grit under that stone. It's important to understand if you feel something like that under the edge of a straight razor or a knife or anything, but particularly a straight razor as fine as the uh, edges want to deal with that you want to handle that get rid of that take care of that really quickly but if you look look at beautiful undercut Lovely. And what I'm going to do now I'm going to use my little Norton stand because that's what I have. And I'm going to use my Hayabusa 4K Now what I'm doing is I'm not using any kind of pressure very very light forward torque on this blade not very much at all just enough to do what I needed to do which is uh, focus on the apex incredibly light you don't need once you get past that 1k you really don't need a lot of a lot of torque or a lot of pressure in order to get the job done and I can already as I turn this razor see everybody oh uh, get you a loop you should get you a loop please understand that's not what I'm saying but for a long time, honers hone straight razors by going like that under a strong light until they could see the bevel. And that's what I did for three years at least or more when I first started honing because I did not have a loop. And I just, I never really saw the need for one because I was uh, doing fine without it. And then one day I thought, well, I'll get me a loop and see what the fuss is all about. And... To be honest, if I had had a loop, I might have progressed a bit faster than I did. But I don't think a whole lot because honing is about paying attention. Period. Uh, it's not about the kind of stone you got to a point. Now you need the type of stones that you need. You need... A 1K, you need a 3K, a 4K, a 5K, something like in that range. One stone that's a 3 or a 4 or a 5K, you need an 8K. And then you, from there, you either uh, you choose your finishing option, what you want. You can uh, use a little bit of paste on a pasted strop. You can use uh, a JNAT. You can use uh, several other natural stones. You can get a 12K synthetic. Or whatever but you choose your flavor of finisher but you need a 1k and then some stone in the 3 to 5k range and then an 8k some type of 8k finisher now some of the JNATs I can take a JNAT or a codicle and I can come off of a 4k stone 
3k stone, 5k stone, whatever, and using slurry or even sometimes using just water depending on your stone, I can finish out that razor to an 8k level and beyond. But you need a particular progression of grits, but beyond that, uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money. But now I can tell you right now, uh, this stone here, uh, before I was using the, and you can see it's dirty, but I was using the Norton 4K 8K combo. The 8K side of that Norton is absolutely fantastic. Okay, but that 4K, you can lap that 4K till uh, your arms fall off. It will still feel like a brick when you hone on it. It's just a rough son of a gun. And don't get me wrong, that 4K served me for a long time. And it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a bad stone. And you could do a whole lot worse than like a King 1K or a, 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 I have a Sue Hero 1200 that's a big huge brick that's a fantastic bevel setter or you know you could do a whole lot worse than one of those and that Norton 4-8 combo. But this stone, this Hayabusa, is like honing on a strop, in my opinion. It's just wonderfully lovely, the feel of it. And it leaves an edge way more polished than that Norton 4K. Uh, as a matter of fact, I do not believe they are in the same grit range. Just because one of them, both of them say, are called 4K by the manufacturer. There are different grit systems. I believe Norton has their own, but I'm not sure. I just know there's a difference in the polish. This stone leaves. I'm going to polish that, polish that 4K Norton leaves. Highly, highly prefer this one. I'm going to move to the Norton. Beautiful undercut. So by the time you reach your polishing stone, the 8K, your razor should be undercutting really well. Now, sometimes, and I don't know what the deal is with it, unless it's just um, variations in the flatness of a stone. Uh, what will happen is when you switch from one grit to another it'll take a a couple of minutes before you start getting the same undercut as you were on the previous stone it shouldn't take that long if by the time you reach unless this stone is way out of flat by the time you reach this stone it should be undercutting I mean you look at that it should be undercutting really well. With no issues whatsoever. I'm 
very light pressure. I'm not counting, I'm just honing, listening to the razor, feeling it under my hand. That kind of deal. Actually watching the bevel as I turn it over. It never hurts to just give it a little bit more. One thing that I would tell you though is that's particularly true on something like your bevel set. Your bevel set, your mid-range stones, I know everybody hears this all the time, but you need to hear it more and more because people have this idea. They get fixated on finishers. They get fixated on, you know, I want that that finishing J-net or that uh, really nice codicle that puts a really fantastic edge on razors and stuff like that. Well, that codicle or that J-net or insert magic finishing hone here. is a piece of crap without everything that goes before it. You get a crap edge on that stone if everything that you did before it was not done right. So it pays to take just a bit of time on something like your bevel setter or your mid-range stone particularly your bevel setter but your mid-range as well and just give it a little extra I'm gonna finish on my JNAT gonna clean off the hone really well and I'm gonna use this uh, I think it's a 9 micron 1200 mesh DMT card and raise a slurry on this stone. Coming off an 8K, you don't really need much of a slurry. in my experience. Very little, if, not, if any, forward torque. Very light. Touch on the razor. You can see the undercut is complete, no issues whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hone on this until what I would describe it as. I, uh, guys use different adjectives to describe it, and so right now. I can definitely feel a cutting action to the slurry. There's a really, really super fine grittiness to the way that the slurry feels. But now as I hone on it, what I'll happen in the way I describe it to myself, I've hesitated to describe it in another in this way to anyone else because I'm not sure that you could truly understand it. But it feels like I move from something that is abrasive to honing on baby powder maybe there's just it's just um complete you can feel that it's completely broken down there is no cutting action or if there is it's not very much left in that slurry now i use simple x strokes when I hone, a lot of guys use 
Japanese half strokes and some guys use other types of strokes and I will if I think that the razor needs it I'll I'll come more heel forward and kind of sweep the razor because what I'm trying to do is is hit every portion of the edge but I'm also especially in the lower hones the 1k and on up I'm trying to hone toward a smile so you'll see me I'll do something like that a lot of times it's what whatever you think is correct uh, you're the honer pay attention to guys that have gone before you that know that are well known in the community I'm going to start diluting. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this stone or on this resin. When you see the blade move, the stone move like that, that little shift it did, it's because the razor is beginning to stick to the stone and the suction of that edge. That's what moved. that stone see not any kind of now I could stop right here it's I'm getting good suction but what I'm gonna do is load that sucker up with water and just do a few more laps until I feel the water will kind of ease the suction, not by much and not for long. But it helps me squeeze a bit more out of the edge than what I normally would when it begins to start sticking really good again. And there it is.
Done. Thanks for coming along. Bless you. I'll talk to you later.